All right, what's up everybody? We're out here at the track. I'm here with Shingai Kusena. Hello. He's a good triple jumper from Zimbabwe, and uh, we've trained together. You've seen him in my videos before, but today we came out and did a jumps workout. So maybe you could explain kind of what we went through, um, kind of the idea behind it, and we'll just go from there. All right, so uh, pretty much today was, uh, um, we started off with, the, with some drills, pretty much. Uh, I think the first one was... Uh, Repeated broad jumps, yep. three broad jumps three into broad the pit. Jumps. Exactly. Uh, and so the idea was just to try and get the body uh, prepped to handle you know, some of the forces of triple jumping. So we were pretty much uh, going. So we started off with the triple broads, and then we went to... Uh, uh, so it's a double leg standing triple jump. So you're going to go twice on that first... Uh, on your first phase instead of the usual um, one half phase step and jump yep. so we went hop hop step and then jump and then uh, from there we worked into uh, some contact stuff uh, so we broke down a step phase um, and also landing from a hop phase into a step phase followed right after that uh, then we went into doing some uh, short approach um, hop phase drill so just focusing on what you want to be doing when you're uh, running down the runway and actually hopping so off that first contact in the triple jump exactly. which is the hop so phase yeah that's a hop phase first phase um, whatever you want to call it but yep. uh, so we worked on that trying to be upright coming to the board and making sure you're not overreaching so one of the mistakes most people are going to do the last three strides are always going to be a little bit too long because people are trying to anticipate the board a little too much where as you want that contact to be closer to uh, your center of mass so right underneath you or slightly in front but almost close to being underneath so that you can sort of pop those hips up and off the board going forward rather than uh, creating breaking forces by extending a little too far forward at that first contact uh, so those went pretty well. Um, you probably see some footage, of course. Yep. Um, Cody has quite a lot of that, so I think we worked through that. Uh, some of what uh, Cody, when he started off, he on the first run, I remember you had like uh, you got a little bit long in yep. the last three, but that was because he was still trying to find that comfortable position. Then exactly. we uh, moved him forward a little bit because sometimes when you run back. Um, when you're, you want to run as close to how you ran the other way. So sometimes it's a little bit uh, relaxed when you do run back to take an approach. Yep. And sometimes we're a little bit long and bouncy. Uh, and then you find out when you turn around coming back to the board, uh, the board is gonna either feel like it's a little further away that you wanna get longer to it because you, well, you're, so, you're anticipating the yep. board so much. So you can always adjust by moving a little bit closer to the board. Uh, but we did that. Cody was able to adjust. Um, I think I was pretty all right through those. Uh, I've been working uh, on that uh, for quite some time, probably the past two years, I think. Uh, and uh, I'm now just getting some of those things. And that's usually what is the biggest difference uh, between some of the guys really jumping far in the game compared to guys that have the potential yep. uh, or what some may call average. But uh, it's just that little... Um, understanding where you want to be when you're hitting the board and how you're actually hitting the board and this also applies to long jumpers uh, a lot of long jumps you, you may even get guys uh, who are 750 uh, 780 jumpers uh, this is meters by the way uh, that will still extend a little too far forward which creates a little bit of breaking forces so you actually do lose some speed uh, at that takeoff, though it gives you this crazy effect of height and yep. feeling very strong through the board. But if you watch most of the lead guys, they're almost losing nothing at takeoff whenever they have their very f um, their best jumps, which will be obviously uh, in the lead world is eight meters plus. Um, for the triple jump, it'll be anywhere. Uh, I like to say anybody going over 1650. Yeah, 1650 is huge. <laughs> yeah, even 16 meters alone, I mean, for that to happen, a lot of things have to go somewhat right if not close to perfect to then obviously when you do um, become a lot efficient through everything else then it's all going to carry over and that's when you start to see some of those biggest jumps so uh, anyway back to um, the drill so we're kind of working our way up uh, sort yeah. of building to where we finished off with some uh, uh, six stride um, approach yeah. I yep. went uh, four to six strides 
just trying to get the rhythm and the goal for that was making sure everything is underneath us as we're coming to the board uh, making those contacts underneath the center of mass and just letting the momentum the little bit of momentum you have sort of carry you through the phases rather than trying to work the ground so hard and that's what you're looking for because when we do sprint down the runway uh, we want that speed to continue through the jump or trying to lose as minimum as uh, as possible through the, 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 the entire jump so that's usually the goal and um, like we saw some of this you've probably seen the drills and things like that that it's a small margin of error literally two three inches a little further could cost you up to a foot in each phase if it's a triple jump which would total a whole meter if you've lost a foot <laughs> yep. for uh, every single phase and then also goes for the long jump that you're going to lose you know, anywhere from half a meter even more. Um, though you're still jumping far, but if you want to really take your jumps to the next level, really pay attention to what is happening. Uh, you know, where the hips are, that second last step and into the takeoff and off the takeoff. Um, yep. yeah. there, one thing that I really like about this session is that each drill that we did led into the next one as far as setting you up for the intensity of the next drill. Yeah. So we started out with a slightly lower intensity you know, type of exercise and then it builds into the next one because if you just jump straight into triple jumping, your system's not gonna be ready. And you're also reinforcing certain technical aspects each time like putting your foot down in the right spot, making sure that your posture is good because just like in sprinting, if we over stride, we're gonna deal with a lot of braking forces so we're gonna slow ourselves down and then that's going to disrupt the next step, which is gonna disrupt the next step, and then it just falls apart from there. Exactly. Similar to the speed endurance phase of sprinting, if we go to, if we overstride when we're doing speed endurance, we're gonna fall apart over the last, you know, 30 meters of the sprint. In the triple jump, if you're reaching at the board, that's gonna impact the next phase. And if you're reaching each time, like casting out or over striding basically then that's going to influence the next phase negatively to the point where you may not even be able to complete the triple jump like what happened to me on some of them where i was just a little bit too far in front exactly so then my knee collapses i can't handle those forces because i'm not in a position where i can handle that leverage and then it falls apart exactly. so if you're designing sessions whether it's for triple jump sprinting whatever and you, you set it up to where each drill sets you up to be more successful in the next one, and they're all working consistent themes throughout the whole session, then that's where you're gonna have your best chance of being successful as an athlete, because then you're reinforcing fundamental movement patterns and building, just like you build your warm up, you start with jogging, then you might do some mobility and then do some drills and then do sprints, and then it builds up to the fast sprints of the workout, or you warm up in the gym, with the bar 135 225 you build up it's the same thing here yeah. so I, I really like that aspect of the session and i think anytime you can reinforce fundamentals but do it with different exercises then you're able to work on the skills that are needed for success in what you're trying to do but also build that wide base of athleticism that we've talked about where you need to be able to exhibit jumping ability in different ways and i think that's one thing that you've sort of modified this year yeah. is you're doing a lot more jumping variations exactly so that way you know if you end up in a weird position you're probably going to be able to come out of it better because exactly. you've exposed yourself to a wide range of different jumping exercises exactly i um, i mean um, during the you know general preparation phase um, i've done a lot of uh, i mean uh, continuous broad jumps you know over distance i've done uh, you know jumping up stadium stairs uh, I've done, you know, side-to-side uh, -side jumps, yep. uh, in-place jumps, um, a lot of bounding, single leg jumps, a lot of bounding as well. So, uh, because I jump, so uh, I've, I've, I've felt that it's it will, it will be more beneficial for me to uh, to probably uh, practice jumping it itself in, you know, in um, in in, in, a different, multitude in different multiple different ways, yeah, multiple directions. Um, and it's really helped because the triple jump, obviously, it's always going to be a linear uh, type of uh, jumping style. But uh, it matters to have a good base of yeah. uh, jumping ability or, you know, plyometric ability, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, and you're um, building your body up. Exactly, yeah. building the body up. So I feel a lot more, um, uh, I guess, resilient in yeah. a way. Um, uh, as to compare to probably the last two, three years of training that I've done. 
uh, obviously injuries in between and things like that so this year I've tried to uh, sort of go back to uh, the core part of my event and, and, and what I do and the ability that I'm trying to develop uh, which ultimately becomes the triple jump so that's a combination of obviously I do a lot of accelerations, uh, speed work and things like that uh, you do have to have uh, you know, some level of fitness if not uh, because you're going through six attempts and each of it's those tiring. attempts is, <laughs> exactly so each of the attempts I mean your approach could be anywhere from 30 to 40 meters uh, plus the jump depending on how far you, uh, you're jumping you still want to add you know an extra 15 to um, you know 20 meters on top of um, that 30 40 meters approach that you have so you have to be able to uh, do it stand and try to give because sometimes the sixth jump is what matters so you yeah. need to be still able to go uh, 100% uh, without uh, though you be fatigued but you you've worked up to that yep. uh, to that point so you have that uh, capacity to exactly. keep jumping at, exactly. at that high level of ability yeah. rather than just yeah. you come out on your first attempt do well and then it, and then everything yeah. crashes from there so that's uh, some of the reasons why I've definitely developed more of a good base uh, with the jumping and then also obviously uh, mechanics are a big thing sprint mechanics because yeah. um, uh, you need a consistent run up Exactly. Very consistent and being comfortable putting your foot down. Yeah, totally. Because <laughs> yeah. if you do extend a little bit too far, um, some of them you may get away with it, but uh, you're taking away from the potential of what your jumps really could be. Because, I mean, a meter in the triple jump is way too big. Yeah, um, it's huge. Same as the long jump, I think any other jump really. Um, so, that's, uh, yeah, that's really the basis of uh, the way I... Uh, Set, I've set up some of the sessions this year and like today typically was uh, today typically would be just a jump day for me and that's including all those drills the yep. double leg stuff single leg stuff and then uh, working contacts individually and then trying to sort of combine everything together to wrap up the session with uh, with the, uh, the triple, jump triple jumps itself. themselves so. yep. and that way you're able to get a good volume of jumping in you're getting a lot of contacts in but you're not wearing out like one movement pattern or doing you know if we had just triple jumped for all the jumps we did today if we had just triple jumped the whole time eventually it, it just becomes too much like going back to the idea of stereotyped movement if you only do one thing eventually your brain is going to get so stuck into one way of doing it it's not going to have any variability and if you have no variability in how you move you're not going to improve, you know? Right. And so if we can target these underlying abilities of being able to handle the ground contacts, putting our foot down in the right spot, you know, being bouncy off the ground, not muscling it, but we can do it in different ways and then finish off with the triple jump, we're still working that most specific skill, but then also working slightly less specific skills throughout the session. And they can all come together over time to make you a better athlete. Exactly. So. I think it was a pretty good session overall. It was my first jumping session of the year. Um, last year, I didn't, yeah, last <laughs> year I didn't do calls, do too yeah. many. So uh, I'd like to yeah. bump things up a little bit in the jumping realm, get better at that. And uh, thankfully, Shingai's here to to help me with that.